bottle of whiskey, the bottle just bit me. Oh, I got his ass now. You have to be fast in the track. I hate that guy. Drunk quick. Change the rest of your life. My bottle got stretched a little bit. And I got a tight little butt. I'm about to light this shit up. Coffee Chatter Radio Show number 90. How good does it feel to be at home, even though we're stuck in quarantine right now? It does feel good to be home. The weather sucks. It's depressing, and we're stuck in quarantine. You're on day one today, and I'm halfway through. I'm, I'm getting over the hump. We are. Holy smoke. Something was playing in the background. It was my iPad. It was causing noise. You are over the hump. How does it feel? That's a, it's a big step to be halfway through. It is. So when you first, so for those people that don't know, we, it's a mandatory two week quarantine when you come back to Canada. So we just got, I just got back from the U S so did James. So I'm a week in now. And the first couple days, um, it feels like a little overwhelming to think that like, fuck for 14 days, I literally can't leave. I can't leave. I can't do anything. (laughs) You're literally literally trapped. (laughs) I'm trapped. Even though I've had a bunch to do, like I got to study for exams and whatnot it's still like the first couple of days was like, holy shit. But now I've kind of gotten into routine and it's going by a little better. And I'm just trying to work out and study and do whatever every day to, uh, throughout the day to stay busy. Um, but it's boring as fuck. Thank God we got a, ch- a radio show today because yeah, it helps. Like this has been all I've been looking forward to today. I'm only yeah. on day one. I enjoyed my day of absolutely nothing. Didn't go outside. Didn't breathe fresh yeah. air. I'm okay with it. Feel great. Really stoked to do the show because I've been looking forward to it. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Hey. Eh? Yeah, we do. Thanks to Pro Gate Europe. Winning starts the Great Gate. Felicia, I think we might have seen used her last time, but she won two out of three mains in Tulsa with great, great starts. Yeah, she had some great gates. Um, she's one of the people we're going to be talking about with some silly season trades going down. Uh, Romain had some great gates also. He's some another silly season trade going down. So every, they're just Pro Gate Europe people. You know what I mean? They are. Yeah, they are. And we spoke to Romain earlier today. So we're going to play that clip with him today. We're going to talk about Felicia, um, talk some BMX, um, but everything. Speaking of Pro Gate Europe, I had somebody hit me up the other day, uh, a chatty, if you will, hit me up about a single man Pro Gate Europe they were uh, looking to uh, inquire about. So I sent them over to our friends at Pro Gate Europe, sent them, told them that Coffee Chatter sent him. And uh, hopefully he's getting the information he needs to purchase one. Dude, the best setup was if you could have an individual pro gate and just have it fully mounted somewhere, like mount it in your yard or something where it was just like an even pitch and you could just do like flat starts. That'd be ideal. That'd be so good, wouldn't it? Yeah, I I always wanted that. Yeah, I always dreamed of that too. Like in my backyard at our old house, I always wanted to put the pro start back there and have like a little jump set up. Always had a dream of it. Never once like got to the point of actually putting the gate back there, but it would have been sick. I know. What are your uh, What are your plans for the next two weeks in quarantine? um do, do you, do you have the same feeling i did like it's a little overwhelming to think two weeks you have to just stay inside basically kind of but kind of not like i've been preparing for this two weeks for a while because like <laughs> i've been when i was training in california i knew i was going hard like everything was going well but i was like i'm looking forward to this break i'm having so i've been looking forward to being in here doing nothing yeah. i honestly feel like i have like i i told you i had to buy my christmas presents or sort my christmas gift shopping out while i'm here do that all online. That's a little overwhelming. And that's like the only thing I have to do. Other than that, I, I'm pretty excited just to literally couch it, finish watching Suits. And I also get to watch Harry Potter series because, you know, you got to watch Harry Potter once a year. And this is my, yeah, you, my you got to You, you got to watch it. Or if it's on TV, you just watch it. Exactly. Um, it's one of those. Yeah, things. I guess it's probably different for me come to think of it, because obviously I'm not really tr- I'm not training or anything. Yeah. And yeah. I go from just living with Savvy for like three months, all settled into routine in Cali to come home no savvy locked in the basement cold dark rainy weather 
<laughs> exactly. Like it's like it's very. I think it's very different for you. Yeah. So depressing. Yeah. Yeah, and especially because I'm I'm pretty lucky. When my parents, they went up to our cabin, so I got the whole house to myself. So to me, it's just like living like normal without training. So it is just like time off and whatnot. For you, you're kind of trapped in your basement, where normally that's your place of zen, like just to go get away and chill. You yeah, can't exactly. Stare at your kitchen, like yeah. I know it's so like yeah, it's depressing. But halfway through, I got exams in uh, two days. Yeah, I got my exams start in two days, so I'll at least have at least I'll have something to do that day, you know, two exams. <laughs> You're looking forward to those, for, for <laughs> Just one. yeah, but just let me kill a few hours, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing uh, I was playing PS4 with my buddy Travis today, who you know, obviously. Yep. And uh, you can put it on the setting on PGA if you're playing like a stroke play match where you both um, hit at the same time. You just see your screen, so it's faster. But instead, we were doing it where we both watch each other. And at first, I was like, oh, switch it so we can just play faster. And I was like, wait a minute. No, I need to kill more time. No, no, no. Let's, let's play the slowest possible way. <laughs> like, let's slow it down. Like, I need this to last a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not much going on in the weekly golf check-in department. But I do have my putting mat set up. And I posted, I probably, I mean, people have probably seen it on Instagram. But I've been hitting a shit ton of putts from, like, six feet. Boy, my stroke is looking fucking clean right now. <laughs> I love the short beginning. It's just going to be dialed. Putting's going to be there. Chipping's going to be, it's all going to be there. And then you're going to go back to the range and then you can just get back to hitting bombs. I've already booked a round with the boys for like the day after my quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's awesome. <laughs> uh, well already, already hitting, they're hitting around with the boys and the day after I'm out. It's going to be good. How's that little, um, little mirror putting like thingy? Dude, the mirror thing is really good. So you put the ball in the mirror yep. and then you, I, you align your eyes so you have one your ball's right in the middle of your eyes okay on the mirror so you can't like, on, yeah. yeah there's a line on the putting mirror so then you can check your alignment like as you're bringing the stroke back and through and if you pull it a little bit you're going to hit the little the little ledge and the ball's going to go offline and miss okay so even if you don't so for instance if you don't use the mirror and you hit it all offline you can still make the putt mm -hmm. but with the mirror you have to hit a dead fucking center or else it's going to go way offline okay so it's this a good sounds, this sounds very beneficial yeah. So I'm, I am looking pretty good on the practice screen right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's what we like to hear. Um, let's quickly give a shout out to the people in the YouTube chat right now. We are actually looking at it this time. Every once in a while, I feel like we forget the chats there, but we're, we're here people. I see uh thunder midget in there. He's letting, he's going off. Uh, he can see my golf channel in the background. That's great. Thanks, people. Thanks for tuning in. So. It's funny. You mentioned that because, uh, I was listening to the four play pod Barstool sports podcast this week. And they were talking about how, I mean, they get like hundreds of thousands of people listening yeah. and they said they sometimes forget people listen when they're talking and right. I go, dude, I have the same thing. So we'll do a show. And I like, I mean, I, I won't really, I, of course I think about what I say, but we kind of just chat shit, whatever. Yeah. And then after some like kid or like a mom will be like, Oh, listen to the show last week. I'm like, Oh fuck. You heard me say like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. What did I say that I shouldn't have? You I forget. Know. Like, I know. It's like, I feel like when we're doing the interviews with um, a guest on, it's very easy to be like, okay, that's a podcast. Like, I'm, I'm doing an interview with you. Like this is actually yeah, really yeah. cool. But when we do these radio shows, it's different. We're just we're shooting the shit. When we start getting into a topic or getting into a story, we start like, we start swearing and, just doing what we would do yeah. like casually. And it's like, Oh boy, what did I just say? Or like an elite rider will message me after and be like, Oh, thanks for the nice words. Or they'll message me about something. And I'll be like, Oh shit. I hope I didn't say anything bad about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> sometimes you're like joking about a person, like trying to make fun of how like be funny. And you're like hoping somebody doesn't take it the wrong way. Like, Oh boy, what did I say? Like, I'm not trying to offend anybody. We're just trying to like crack jokes. Cause we don't really filter anything. Like we, the way we're talking on the show is literally how we just hang out in real life. Pretty much. Yeah. And that's why the show is fun for us because we don't put on a like a polished front or anything. It's just it's just how we are. It is what it is. And I think that's why like most podcasts are like these days because the people that do it are very authentic and they just shoot the shit, right? Yeah. Well, I love the foreplay pod. Yeah, exactly. Like Barstool Sports is a perfect example. And some people think it's like a bit crude or whatever. And at times it probably is. But I mean, yeah. they just talk like normal people. Whereas I don't really like listening to podcasts. Or like Joe Rogan's a good example. He just talks like a normal dude who's talking and meeting people. Mm -hmm. um, no one, like, I don't think anyone really wants to listen to like a politically correct, really polished interview or show. What's the point? It's like when athletes or people get interviewed and they just say the same routine thing. It's like, you don't get anything. It gets a little, it gets a little washed down. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear that. I'll go to the news if I want to hear that. The new people, the news anchors, dude, this is okay. I just re remember my rant. 
Let it rip. People, the new, the way they talk, dude, I can't stand the way they talk. And since I was a kid, I remember, I can't fucking stand it. You know, they'll be like, instead of saying like, oh, there was an accident on Highway 1, they'll be like, there was an accident on Highway 1. <laughs> it fucking rattles me. <laughs> like, just talk normal. We're normal people listening. Like, just say, there was a really bad accident on Highway 1. Not, there was a really bad accident on Highway 1. You know what I mean? I don't watch the news that often. So I have no idea where you've never heard a news person talk. talk like this. No, I, I know what you're talking about. They very much overdo things and they like, it's too much. Like it's, it's just ridiculous. There's so the emphasis they put on like transition stuff. It just fucking grinds my gears. When that, that noise comes in, like, like breaking news, dun, 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 even though that's sports center, it's like, and we now can we, you know, move yeah, over yeah, to yeah, our yeah. person. Yeah. 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 Like just speak. <laughs> normally we're normal people like just speak normally to us just like it's english you can talk to me i it's know the same language. like it's we not. we know the same language like you can actually speak the exact same language as, as i speak and we can we can understand each other you don't have yeah. to slow it down for me no you don't have to put ridiculous like dramatic emphasis on shit just talk normally please <laughs> just, just one time that's all we're asking for okay seriously <laughs> bar still needs their own radio or their own news station can you imagine Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be absolutely epic. I try to listen to their Barstool radio, but I, I haven't. I don't have that app, that one that you use that they don't oh, use. Oh, Sirius anymore. XM, four months of free streaming. Get yours today. <laughs> They're off that app, and I didn't pay for it. And I just haven't used it. So yeah. Anyways, um, um, oh, this isn't on your show script. Thought we'd just give a quick shout out to. Um, well, first, I, I noticed actually it's two people now, but uh, Rich and Vilma, Rich yeah. at Tangent, they are having a baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see that too? Yeah. Yeah. I would give a shout out to them. And then I saw Tyler and Cass are also having a second newborn as well. Yeah. Congrats to uh, Rich and Vilma and Tiger and Cass. New babies coming into the world. Awesome to see. Very exciting. Um, yeah. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't actually know Rich and Vilma were married. I, to be honest, I didn't either. So that, I like that he threw that in there for us people that, you know, weren't in the, in the loop to just know. I yeah. wasn't realized either, but that's very cool. I wonder if I knew and he had posted about it and I just forgot or what, but. I'd assume when someone makes that little funny comment like you did in there, I would assume not. Makes maybe me feel just, better thinking that we didn't at least. Like yeah, maybe we just it. did like a, a quiet, like a small wedding or something. But yeah, yeah. Awesome. they're all awesome people. So I'm stoked they're all gonna be well, Tyler and Cass are good parents and they're all gonna be great parents. So yeah. Like really cool. Um big weekend is it was a big weekend this past weekend of sports. I got fucking hyped watching F one. I know we're not oh, one podcast, no. but we got we gotta to touch on what happened in F one on the weekend. Yeah, we're not an F1 podcast, but we are fans of F1, and shit went off in a good way. So but you didn't in a watch, bad way, also in a bad way. If you didn't watch Formula One, this may be one of the biggest racing heartbreaks I've ever seen in any in any racing sport. It was absolutely. It was. It, it hurt my heart. It it's literally scary, it hurt scary. my heart to watch. I was yelling. I actually like. I don't get. I don't actually get that hyped watching other sports usually. Mm-hmm. But I got. I was literally in the basement yelling at my TV like a psychopath by myself. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was throwing fist pumps and everything. I was like, yeah, baby, come on. Like throwing fist pumps at the computer screen. Yeah. First of all, that car company completely fucked George Russell. <laughs> no free ads on this show. No, no free, free ads. ads. I mean, Toyota, if George Russell was on a Toyota, he would have won. But the <laughs> other car company, <laughs> they suck. <laughs> if that car company was in Formula One, if Toyota was in Formula One, he would have won. If he was driving a Tacoma, he would have won. Unfortunately, he was some shitty other car company. They couldn't figure out the tires, put the wrong tires on his car. He was still going to win. They made a pit again, still going to win. And then they just completely fucked him with another pit stop. The amount of times that guy had to experience heartbreak. Off the start, he pulls he pulls the whole shot, basically. He's running away with it. A crap. Yeah. Backstory, he's on a really shitty team. He, and Lewis Hamilton gets COVID, who's world champion. So he gets to drive in Mercedes' car which yep. is the fastest car. And then he's leading the whole race. And then he has to pit with like 17 laps to go. They mess up his tires. He goes back to fifth, gets back to second, is still going to win. And then they me- messed up again. He had to pit again. And then the safety oh, got a flat and- tire. Yeah. And then he ends up getting like ninth or something. So Absolutely was- heartbreaking. That car company completely screwed him out of a win. And even like the total wolf came out and said that was a colossal F up and they felt bad, obviously, because it was their fault. Yeah. By the sounds of it, I listen, like I listened to a bunch of interviews after trying to get the scoop, like what happened. Apparently, on the first when they went in for the pit stop at the at the uh, yellow flag uh, safety car, 
Yeah. The radio. He says, I don't know if, do you believe this? He says the radio's messed up and it didn't get, word didn't get into the pit crew that Russell was going to pit. And then, so they didn't have his tires ready and they basically panicked, rushed out there. And then that's why they had the wrong tires ready. Are you trying to tell me half a billion dollar budget and the headset fries out? <laughs> that's like, well, are you shitting me? Are you kidding me? You mean that guy on the radio that's across the way couldn't just turn around from his chair, yell, we need George Russell's tires. He's coming into pit. You, you mean the I one mean? guy who gets half a million dollars a year and his only job is to communicate to the rider? Couldn't communicate Fox, to the Fox, Fox. Like, come are on. Are you fucking kidding me? And you're telling me all those guys in there didn't hear it, like the TV going box, 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 box or something. Like, are you shitting me? Imagine being like George Russell's on a team where he's never gotten a top 10. Because the car, I mean, Formula One, if you just don't have a car, you just can't make it happen. He gets to ride with the premier team, and he's clearly the fastest guy, showing his talent, going to win, and then gets ninth. Completely out of his out of his control. And that car company never messes up like that, and they just so happen to mess up when he's about to win. Is just infuriating. Absolutely infuriating. Are you shitting me? Unbelievable. You know, like, it's absolutely it, unbelievable. In a way, though, this might actually benefit him more, because he still showed that he more or less was going to win the race completely. Yeah. And people would probably feel so bad for him. Like he actually probably got more attention this way because it's a huge story. He could have. Yeah, honestly, it was a massive story. The, f- yeah. the funny part is, so they mess up his tires. They realize they're messing it up while they're putting Valtteri's tires on. And so they just threw Valtteri's t- the tires. He came in to take off. They threw back on and he went back out and then he just. Dude, I don't understand. So he's I- like, I, wa- I listened to the radio and he's like, when they're like, we put the tires back on. He's like, you did what? Like they put the same fucking used tires on his car because they threw half the tires on Russell's car and they can't mix up the swap, the tires and they had nothing ready. So they just were like, fuck it. We need to put these tires back on. How How, ridiculous. How does they have two garages? They had a crew of like 20 mechanics. I don't understand. I don't understand how you're this, you're this, to be honest, you're this bloody stupid that you can make that mistake. It's ridiculous. And we got, we got, we got Gavin eats food. We got Roger. I think that's Roger. I don't know. Roger in the thing saying, we forget that Russell spun his car like the other day behind a pit car or behind the, the safety car. Okay. That time when he spun his car behind the safety car, that was like a fluke incident. It's happened to more than just him. So F off. Russell is a fucking such a good driver. What do you do? Like a couple of races ago, he's behind the safety car in first and he was warming the tires up and he just spun out and hit the wall. How does this have any relevance to right now, Roger? Because it was, yeah, exactly. It's like, we're not talking about that. George Russell is a fantastic driver. He was on route to freaking win the race. Yeah. Unbelievable. So that was, that was, that was quite a, that was quite a Sunday. That was quite a Sunday. Yeah, man, man. Was it like just talking about it after the fact I was so bummed after I was like, I was so excited for that win. It was coming. It I was so there. I know. And obviously as racers, we can appreciate how insane that was. Yeah, absolutely nuts. So. Um, in other news, we, the the Joris Kalen photo we posted on the weekend. So first of all, James, very funny meme with the Joris Kalen one you you posted. Very, very entertaining. How good? Like that, that's just that's just gonna live on. That was hilarious. That was hilarious, and obviously meant no disrespect to anyone. It's just we would have posted if it was us or anyone. It's just funny. I think both those guys, Joris included. I think we could relate that when you're trying to relate that to 2020. It was just too good. It's just funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But That's good it was mind-boggling. Not that many people knew who or where it was. How do you people not know? It, I, was, got, I was actually shocked. No, like a lot of people didn't know. Like, are you living under a tree? Like, what is going on here? That is one of the most iconic. Mo- That's an iconic moment in the sport. Like, granted, it wasn't 2011, so whatever, nine years ago. But still, it's probably one of the most famous, like, kind of like heated what heated um, exchange right. that's happened yet in our sport in like Supercross. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I think so. And the video is pretty, like, pretty famous. And, you know, <laughs> it's funny because also, you know, the sound bite we have, you play the silver one, you have to be fast on the track. You have to be fast on the track. It's not yeah. actually, like, I don't think a lot of people know this either. Sylvan's, Sylvan's actually making fun of Joris in that. He's not, yeah. like, he's not actually trying to sound like that. He's, Sylvan's actually making fun of Joris because after the crash, Joris went up to Kaylin and was like, you have to be fast on the, on the track, no? So that's yeah. where it came from. And I think people don't know that either. Yeah. I, to be honest, I completely just forgot about that until you were mentioning it, but that is exactly what that's from. Yeah. And I forget it because now we just play that as Sylvan, but that was just part of the heated argument that was going on. <laughs> yeah, we played it. We Joris. played as Sylvan, but it's actually Joris who was saying it at the time. Yeah. And that's probably the most famous soundbite in our sport ever. I wish there was better audio and of the actual, like, 
heated discussion that went down after the finish line there because like the video we played that's from one of the broadcasts so you, they don't actually sh like you can't hear what's going on but there are like there was good like bickering going back and forth Kaylin and Joris and then Sam gets involved and then it like the old big Q Quentin Calliron is right there with Joris like the French guys there and it's just going off yeah I think uh, it's funny from both their perspectives like if I was Kaylin I'd be pissed because I was in third and got fucking cleaned out out of nowhere and so if like you obviously don't know at the time when you're in third that the guy in, you don't know like what actually happened so if i'm in third and i get cleaned out i'm pretty pissed but then obviously like a lot of people don't know too after like right after that back in the pits kaylin calmed down and went over and apologized to joris mm -hmm. and then they're obviously fine and then from joris perspective there's nothing wrong with his move it's a super cross semi and he's going for the past like i would have done that anyone would have done that any racer out there i think should have and would have done that not yeah. like he was never going in to take anybody out the amount of speed that joris had flying down that third straight he passed like two guys at the beginning of the straightaway he passed sam and caitlin like into the last turn like going into the turn yeah freaking flying like there was nowhere else for him to go he had to try to go under the on the low side and that turn is tight as hell we all know that yeah and you mean to tell me like caitlin or sam would have done that you don't think sam would have done that of course he would have all right yes yeah, so, like, like, in a good way, like Sam, Sam would do anything to make it through. Sam would have done the exact same move. It's probably would have Kayla. And if you don't do that move, well, you're not going to make the main then. Simple as that. Exactly. What are you going to do? Honestly, what are you going to do? Pull yeah. the shoot and just like sit in fifth and not go for that. Like that's a qualifying spot for the main event at a world cup. Yeah. It wasn't, it was dirty about it. It's just a racing incident and shit happens fast. Like, yeah. <laughs> we know how tight that turn is, especially everything just kind of pinches right there when you got yeah. a lot of speed. When you're coming in with as much speed as he did, as soon as that little bump happened, he just lost traction. And when you lose traction, your bike hits the other guy. It just caused the snowball effect. And yeah, I mean, yeah. For anybody who thinks that's dirty or that was like the wrong move, I'm, I'm not with that. I understand where Kalen would have been frustrated at first. Yeah, like yeah. Said, he, he understands like after, after he cooled down, he apologized. It's racing. That shit happens. No, exactly. Of course, anyone would be pissed if they're getting cleaned out. But after you see the video, it's like, well, I mean, what are you supposed to do? The guy was fucking ripped. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So. But yeah, dude, it's kind of cool to see that. Like there's so, some uh, uh, cool guys to watch racing that obviously aren't racing now. It is cool. Yeah. So I'm just reading a comment from Jake's Ferns in the YouTube thing. He's like, I sent it to Kalen and this was his reply. Classic. Poor Joris. I bet he gets tired of seeing it. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kalen's a really good dude. Like he. Yeah. He's the type of guy, like, at the course, he's been pissed at the time, but after, like, he traded jerseys with Joris, and it was fine. But it's racing. Anybody who cares about what they're doing and has passion for winning and trying to improve, be in the yeah. finals all the time, they're going to – if you're not getting heated, I feel like you don't have the passion. Like, either you're very good at keeping calm and moving on, which is, I think, extremely tough to do in, in that exact moment, or if you don't, like, what happens to them, you're very passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. It gets yeah. you. Like, you need time to cool down. Sh shit happens in the moment. I know from experience shit happens in the moment. You need time to yeah. cool down. So, yeah, I don't remember ever getting cleaned out and being really pissed like that. And uh, we, our sport doesn't have it like these other sports where it's like you're in the field talking to the other person and like bickering back and forth while it's happening. It's like you do something, it happens after, then you bicker about it. And then it's like, you don't see each other. Then. Yeah. I think it doesn't <laughs> happen as much in our sport either. Cause like everyone's kind of, everyone's like pretty friendly. Whereas in other sports, like I don't, they're not friends. Like they don't even talk. When you're on like a different like hockey team, basketball team, when yeah. too, you're, you're making millions of dollars, you don't really care. So you're just there to fucking, yeah. I don't know, start shit, get in somebody's head, like play mind games, all this other crap. Yeah. Or in like super motocross and stuff, like those guys, a lot of them don't even really talk. They don't like each other. So they don't, they really don't care about getting each other's face and swearing. Whereas like, I don't know if me and you had a run in, like <laughs> we might not be screaming and swearing at each other. No, probably not. I'd be pretty pissed, <laughs> though. I think we'd keep, we'd keep quiet for a bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That'd be pretty funny if we just, you just, or like national champs in 2016, just team me up in the second turn. <laughs> there would definitely be like, a, like that stare and that, like the head shake, the hand throw, like, what are you fucking doing? Like, what are you doing, bro? I know. And then eventually one of us would, be, then we'd like cool off and be like, yeah, sorry, bro. That was dumb. <laughs> exactly. That's normal. Yeah. Yep. Um, then other news, I guess we can get to the sponsor stuff. So Felicia and Ro Romaine obviously signed new deals. Um, let's talk about Felicia first. So it's cool to have her on board. The uh, 
factory answer back s squared get yours today they're the beautiful answer forks answer it's dagger BMX, baby get yours today holding them up right now these you know answer bmx dagger forks she's gonna be running these next year t yeah she is it's cool yeah. to see uh john pick her up and um yeah, she'll be on the squad i think she's coming into really good form right now like obviously we saw her at the grands um she looked really good i think she's gonna have good title chances the next few years probably gonna have a good shot at the olympic medal this year if uh all goes well and she's there like i think she should be um so i think good pickup for uh for answer and and the team and john and everyone right now yeah 100 percent agree big pickup i think as well like you said because she has that potential in these next few years to i would consider i would call it rack up some titles yeah um, she for sure. clearly showed how good of form she was in at the grands this past year um and only going to be getting wiser with experience as she goes on with the olympics world cups like it's someone you want on your team if you're in, in any team, any rider, any, any, whatever. Um, really great to see, great to see her come on board the, uh, yeah. the team. Yeah. I think she's going to win a lot of races the next few years. I think so too. Um, yeah. we need to have an interview with her or are we, are we working on locking it down for next week? It's already locked down. Yeah. So I messaged her today. So we're going to have Felicia on the show next week, uh, full show. So, uh, yeah, well, let's dive into her decisions to, um, leave supercross and join answer s squared and um what transpired and also kind of get into her story a bit um we've you know maybe she's been on our list for a while actually and um so yeah it'll be cool to talk to her next week we always have like people ask like how we do this you know with guests and whatnot and we have our list of people and a lot of times it kind of things just work out where there's a moment in time where we're like it's time to have this person on this yeah is one of those times like honestly some people have been on our list since like we first started the show and we just haven't got to them yet yeah like, so I don't want, here's the thing. I don't want to, there's a lot of good elite riders we haven't gotten around to yet. And yeah. it's not because we haven't thought of you. It's like, you literally probably <laughs> been on our list. We just waiting for a good time to have you on. Yeah. It's crazy. A lot of time it's somehow yeah. it just works out that it's a time for a person to have them on. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we just throw a random guest in there that we've been chatting to recently and it just works out. But yeah, this is the time she's uh, in the news yeah. right now. Big, big sponsor change. It's part of our team, so we were happy to have her on board, and it'll be fun to chat with her next week. Yeah, I think it's in everyone's best interest, like ours and theirs, to have them on at the, at the best opportunity, like when they do well at a race or which for what, maybe not even that, but just for whatever reason, it works out that it works out. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Um, um, also, we didn't actually, I don't know if we had this on the list. I, I didn't check your list, sorry. I didn't re recheck it here. Uh, we didn't post about it either, but Cam Larson also just recently moved on from Supercross. I was surprised about that one. Didn't didn't see that one coming. I actually didn't see that, really. Yeah, I, I didn't post about it yet because we already had these two posted. Um, figured we'd chat about it on the show here like we are now. But yeah, Cam Larson also moved on from Supercross. So that was surprising to see when Felicia just moved on as well. Did he say where? No, uh, still up in the air by the sounds of it. It sounds of it like it was a little like... I think last, I don't want to say last second, but just, yeah, things didn't work out with the team and yeah, moved on. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes. Cause obviously he's a yeah. top up and comer in the U S who deserves a good ride. He's has a lot of potential as well. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. I think, uh, he's got a good future ahead of him too. So I'm sure, I am sure someone will snag him up the kind of shitty thing. I mean, who knows how that transpired if he left or dropped him or mutual or who knows, but, um, bad time of the year like in a descent like mid-december now or whatever it's yeah. tough yeah i mean especially this year when with covid happening like you don't know what people's budgets are especially going to next year it's still unknown so trying to find a ride and trying to secure yeah. the team budget is going to be tough so hopefully it gets that worked out um i'm sure people online will have their guesses we don't know this one we don't know where he's going so that'll be interesting to see yeah we'll have to wait and see um congrats to romaine big change for mr romaine mayu um good deal for him obviously he's a top guy in the world and uh yeah it's cool to see um we uh talked to him this morning actually so we're gonna play that clip in a sec but um yeah he uh there's no bad blood between him and tangent obviously those guys are awesome guys and they treated him well and he wrote his balls off for them but sometimes in in sport and bmx it's just in the rider's best interest to move on to something move on to a different sponsor whether it be financially or for a change or whatever yeah um, I like what he said in the interview. It's like his relationship with Rich and Tangent, it wasn't just like a, his boss. It wasn't just, you know, the, the company. It was yeah. a friendship, family, and that makes it tough when you're, when you're moving on. So, uh, for sure. It's not easy. It feels like, feels like a breakup when it's like that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So well, let's play that clip with Romain so you guys can hear. Let's hope it works this time. Really got to, really got to hope it works this time. Here, here we go. 
you gonna okay we're, we're good now what's up romaine here with romaine mayu newly on yeah the, uh, what's up guys gt bicycle squad congrats on the new ride yeah thank you thank you very much I got first before we get into things. I gotta say, Rome, that's great placement of your answer BMX whole shot um, check that. right there in the corner. Look at well that. placed. Look well at that. placed. I know that's not your team, but well placed. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you, James. James, you're watching golf in the background. It's a it's a common trend that whenever we do this, I always just put the golf channel on, and whatever plays plays. So you can't watch it, but like I can watch it. It's is how I do you watch enjoy it through the screen. Oh, I got something going off on my computer. We we don't need these. We don't need these things. Oh no! What's happening? <laughs> I, I can still see you guys fine. Okay, good because something. I'm good too. I'm good and... too. Okay, yeah. Romain, are you are you in your room in Paris right now? Yeah. Yeah. Recognize it. How's oh, the bed? Did? Is it still really hard? No, no, it's good. I have my home bed now. Home bed, home couch, everything. The coffee machine. So are you you're still living full time in Paris at the moment? um yeah well uh I, I go home sometimes i'm not like all the time in paris um when i have a, a week off or a deload week i'm gonna go back home for a week but yeah most of the time in paris right now it's easier even like for training with all the gyms everything is like closed in france so we are allowed to train like normal in this qa which is nice so that's why i'm, I'm staying here for now so give us the deets, Rome. Um, this is the time of year. A lot of big team changes are going down, and this is probably the biggest one. And to start things off of the year was from you. Uh, moving to GT Bicycles, how did that all come about? Um, the thing started as a joke, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, I, for real, I was just going to the Saoyang BMX track, which is a few minutes away from where I live. I don't know if... Did you go there, little toy? Yeah, we used to train there quite often. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... Um, there's the new president for the past five years. And I was just there with Sylvain and Joris before national. And we got a talk at the end of the, of the training. And he was telling me he wanted to have a pro in his, in his team, like in, um, in the club. I was like, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm open. So just tell me what you can do. And I'll tell you if I can be part of that. And he was like, okay, give me, give me a few months and I'll go back and I'll come back to you. Um, so he, he did some research to have like a budget and everything. I know he talked with GT a lot too because he kind of knew what I had before with uh, Tangent and uh, with my club too. And then he came back to me, that was like three weeks ago, telling me like, okay, we can do this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make it. We're going to make it. So that's, that's, that's how that happens. One of the cool things. So, yeah. So like in a lot of people don't know, but, you guys ride for your clubs in France and they pay you to go to the races and stuff. So like yeah. is it, is GT and Sarion's like, they're the same, like they're kind of doing it together or what? Yeah. GT is a big partner for the club. Yeah. Okay. So, and they were interesting to have uh, a top guy again. So that's why they were interesting to have me. And uh, um, so at the end, I got a deal with Sarion uh, and also with GT, which is good. That's awesome. So from what I've heard, I think a little bit from you, I haven't heard the full details, but you're going to do some stuff in the U S with them representing them and stuff obviously through Europe. Yeah. Um, so I'll always be wearing the same Jersey, which is nice. Uh, they were, they were not going to be like a team Jersey, a club Jersey. So it's going to be the GT Jersey all the time. And, uh, when I, when I'm going to be in France and Europe on the Euro cup, French cup, so that will be for the club. And I have also a budget, like to to go race in the US, which is nice. And That's um, solid, yeah. so I will still be the same. I'll still be riding for the for my club, but also for GT and representing them, like yeah, around the world. Dude, that's so sick! I love how in France the club like the club sponsor pros. I think that's awesome. Yeah, they, we are lucky because it's not just you have a club. It's uh, they support you, they pay yeah. you, they they want to have like big names in the team. So at the end of the year, they can win the, the team championship. Yeah. And I think it just brings more money for them in the club every year. And that's, uh, that's why they all, that's what they all try to do. And it's pretty cool. That's it's, like, so, it's like the constructors championship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew exactly what you were thinking. Exactly the <laughs> Gotta win that constructors. That's where all the big money is. I know you're basically like fucking Lewis Hamilton and Toto Wolf over there. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. Tell us, so was it awkward kind of having to uh, kind of talk to, to Rich at Tangent? Because I know like he's such a cool guy, but whenever it comes to these kind of situations, I, I get a little bit awkward, like I'm not experienced in it. Was it, this, do you have that feeling? It, it was, it was, it was so tough to be honest. It was yeah. really hard. Um, be, like the relationship that I have with Rich is not just, it was not just my boss. It was just not business. It was friends and family. And so that's why it was hard and it was a tough decision. Um, I had to think for, for a few days before to really be like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I wasn't sure till the moment that I called the guy and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys. I go with, with JT. But yeah, it took me a week to really think about it and make sure it was a good thing to do. Yeah, it was hard. It's it's like a it's like a breakup whenever you like split kind up. of yeah it's a breakup <laughs> that you don't want to do it's just <laughs> yeah you, like, have, you have to do it but you don't want to do it you're think you're like whenever you have to split with a coach or a sponsor you like think about exactly what you're gonna say and there's just no easy way to say it you just no it. it's like, so hard you're like in your mind you're like here we go here we go <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then you're like oh I'm doing it I'm doing it <laughs> <laughs> it's happening holy shit it's happening they're like well there's no turning back now <laughs> no turning back too late now yeah it's good though like it, it's good for personal growth i think too to go through that and i don't know sometimes just a change is good too yeah of course I, uh that's what i was thinking too it just i love like to have a new challenge it's just yeah. it drives me so um even more in like this kind of year we had nothing happening like nothing so it's just something new new like new everything i changed pretty much everything only like I just kept my shoes and the gloves. That's all I have the same on my bike and the cranks. That's it. So everything is different. Um, new kit. And then, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. It's good, good challenge. And uh, I'm excited. And BMX, we're not, obviously, we always say this. We're not a big money sport. You got to do what you got to do for yourself to, to get through, make a few bucks. And you, at the end of the day, you had to do it. Let's just go like that. Um, yeah, but you were, able, you were able to ride the bike. How was it? How did it feel? Was it way stiffer than all the other bikes? Just like way stiffer. Well, you know me, James. You know <laughs> what I think about the bike. So it's just for me all the same. Yeah, yeah, it's all the same. It's just just the bike. Um, it's the bike is actually a bit different because the um, the top tube is bigger. I used to ride a twenty two, and that's a twenty two point five. So that's the only thing that's different. Um, but at the end, it's just a bike, and and I like it. Like. I like it the same as I like my my old bike and and everything. So yeah, if you're fast, you're fast. So it doesn't matter what that you you're riding. Yeah, that's pretty true. You always seem like a guy that when I know it's just like whatever he has, he'll ride it, he'll race it, you'll you'll do it fast. It's no big deal. Just ride it. Yeah. I was I was trying my bike. I had no car. I was just no carbon frame or nothing, and I was totally fine. We had a little glitch out there. Things were getting a little bit frozen. Yeah, back, you're back. back, back. back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Oh, that's the connection. Well, Toy, we have the Wi-Fi now, but it's, the Wi-Fi is not pretty good. Oh, you have, you have to get it from the velodrome anymore. No, you don't. You don't need to get it from the velodrome. It's from the cube. Yeah, about time. Yeah, about time, but it still sucks. Are most of the guys in uh, in Paris right now? Uh, yeah, everyone's there. Everyone that leaves that lives here all the time is is here right now. How many Starbucks have you guys gone to in the in the town this past week? We we can't. It's everything is closed. All the restaurants and stuff. Yeah. So they're all the only the only place I have coffee is here. The RM one hundred cafe right there. Yeah, everyone, great latte art. I feel you like the MX is the same espresso machine. We all have the same. Yeah. It's obviously yeah. we're on a low budget. We need a we need a, a tight space. <laughs> it's not really option. We, we want to do make. We want to make good coffee. We, we don't want to spend two thousand grand for a coffee machine. That's <laughs> yeah. what we do. I was. I was like, did you guys see Graf's fucking coffee setup? Oh, it's that's a coffee level. shop. Like, that's a real coffee that's shop. Unbelievable. That, how much is that? That must cost a few grand. That setup. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But, that, but it's yeah, it's amazing. It's I think amazing. His, I think his grinder alone costs more than our machine. Oh, twice a machine. <laughs> twice. I mean, 500 bucks for this Breville is already pretty steep for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Well, uh, you got anything else for Remain, James, or should we let him go? 
uh, one last question, Ron. What's what's the plans moving forward for next year? I think I know things are still up in the air. We're still waiting on World Cup schedule. Um, uh, USA BMX stuff is out. What do you got planned? Do you know it? Yeah, there's, there's this little race called the. There's this little race in Tokyo next year. You trying to go, go there? Or what's your plan? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to go there. That's still the plan. So we'll see when we have uh, the um, the next World Cup if we're racing and where we're racing and when. But in the meantime, um, I'll try to go to the U.S. Uh, got the, I got the, what do you call that? The NIE, NEI? I don't know. Some kind of like athlete an, exemption, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exemption. Yeah, yeah. I just got it today, so I'm allowed to travel to the, to the U.S. And then within the next 30 days. So a lot of chances that I'm leaving uh, as soon as possible, which means like in, in five days. <laughs> Loki's okay, um, bags are packed in the back. Like, oh I'm yeah, actually, I'm actually packing right now. <laughs> oh, I'll, do, I'll check. I'll check the weather in Paris for the next ten days, and it's just rain and five degrees. So I don't want to stay here. Sounds like here, yeah. No, so yeah, I think I'm gonna leave pretty soon, and I'll be racing Phoenix for sure. And I don't know how long I'll stay then, but that's the plan for now. I just, yeah. I think I need some to race and do some stuff, and not just training and wait till we have World Cup if we have World Cup. You got to get side to get an exemption somehow. Meet you in meet you in the U.S. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. But it looks like it's almost impossible to get out of there. Uh, they're really strict in Australia. Um, they are living like normal. And so um, yeah, I know it's so so hard to get out of there, and for me to get there, it's impossible. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, we have some work up soon, so I can see how the <laughs> it's, it's tough. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Well, shit, bro. It was good to uh, good to chat to you. I miss you. Yeah, it's good to see you. I miss you guys. Hope I'll see you sooner. Yeah. yeah I'll see you. Hope Thanks see for coming you on, bro, man. No problem. Pleasure. Right. <clears throat> Romain Mayu, everybody. Romain Mayu, what a guy. He's gonna yeah. hope he wins the World Cup soon. You think he's bound to, hey? His speed and all, all that, he's bound to. He's been fast enough to win a few by now. Yeah, honestly, I think he is too. Yeah. Like from the outside, that pull he has from the outside, like he's put it together now a few times. Um, do smaller races, so he's got it. It's, it's he just was, a matter of time to me. He was so fast in Shepparton earlier this year. Gosh, man, his speed from the outside. He's so yeah. much pull down the straight, like the la- later part of the straightaway. It's insane. Same with, uh, I mean, obviously in Paris too, but... Um... Yeah. He's, oh man, how hard he should have won in Paris. The speed he had in Paris was next level. The first year in Paris, for sure, too. Yeah. So he in 18. Like, yeah. He looked like he had like unmatchable speed down the first straight, and then he was just effortless around the rest of the track. Yeah, I think it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, definitely is. But did you see? Speaking of which, I mentioned it there, but did you, did you see the graph coffee setup? It's fucking outrageous. It, it looks is. like looks like a full on roasting like cafe in his kitchen. <laughs> that's a good way to explain it because it's probably what it is yeah he's got by the works i bet you he's roasted his own beans you think he's roasted i think he's roasted his own beans before it, it looks like one of the roasting machines that it looks like the roasting machine that c market coffee has here honestly though well i think we're talking about his grinder but it, it's exactly what it looks like yeah yeah how much thing the whole setup cost five grand well okay i'm thinking he's got the rocket he, uh, I don't know how much it is, but I'm going to throw the rocket as like a thousand dollars. I think the rocket's like between three and five. Like oh, really? Three. I think so. It's okay. Like let's, th- let's throw the rocket at three then. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking the grinder 1500 at least, at least 1500, maybe two grand. So we're looking at like a, uh, $5,000, five to six grand set up there. I'd say. Imagine what like- you could buy five grand with besides fucking coffee. Like you could... Imagine if you put five grand in like a high interest savings account or just put it in, in put it in like mutual funds and just let it ride. <laughs> but you wouldn't get the enjoyment. Of, he's even got the knock box built in to the tabletop. Like that is, that is well done. That countertop, the coffee counter, well done. No, it's a badass setup for sure. But it's like, you know, it's just fucking coffee, right? Like it's a drink. <laughs> yeah, it's- <laughs> like, I love coffee for sure. And uh, have an espresso machine. Yeah. But like, it is just a drink at the end of the day. Like it's just a drink. It is. I, I, I guess it is. But I mean, like, I'm like, I guess I'm part more way to his level of like, I want it more than I want my, my, my five grand in stocks, but that could be, you know, this would be a great time to invest that money in stocks instead of a coffee machine. 
hundred percent. Hundred percent. Put it towards a down payment on a house. How about that? <laughs> a couple mortgage payments. How about that? Tyler Brown says twenty five hundred dollars for a rocket. I just saw that pop up there. So, uh, but yeah, we're looking at a we're looking at a five to six grand probably whole setup there. I don't know how much that table costs. That is a lot of money. A lot of money. It is a lot of money, but it, I mean, it is one hell of a setup. But that is that is a lot of money. Yeah. Um, before we get into the second kind of half of the show here, T, um, do you like it when tracks get their timing and scoring scoring done in a in a quick and efficient manner? I mean, I definitely don't hate it. You definitely don't hate it. Well, no. guess what? If you go to motosheets.com, you can get a timing and scoring system made easy. And you know what? You might not want it personally, but your track does. Because when they have a race, they want all that timing and scoring done efficiently, quickly, easily, you name it. So hit up our friends, hit up the Webster family at motosheets.com. And you know what? Just tell them Coffee Chatter sent them or sent you. I don't think you'll get a deal, but hey, they might treat you better because you're a chatty. Yeah, they might. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll hook you up a little bit. You never know. Maybe get some free swag. Maybe get a bottle out of it. You never know. Um, yeah. They got an app coming out soon too. Don't know when that's happening. We got to touch base, but hey, motorsheetstop.com guys. Get your stuff. Com, baby. So there's no UCI Supercross schedule coming out next year, but or, that was, that was just terrible wording. There hasn't been a schedule that's come out yet. Okay. Yep. There we go. So you imagine you guys are just training in January and all of a sudden, all right, guys, we're going to, we're going to Turkey next month. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, hey? Time to peak. All right, guys, time to go fast. We'll have a race next month. I'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> it, it, it might be something like that. Not Maybe not that extreme, but I could see it being somewhat last minute. I think so. Um, I, I think you're right. I think there's been rumors flying around within the BMX world, nothing public, nothing official. But I think you're right with the world still still changing drastically. You know, it's still fluid and... It's an ever-changing fluid situation. <laughs> I think, yeah, countries are changing. The restrictions are changing. So it might be like, hey, like this place couldn't have it next month. But hey, this country can have it. So we need to go here. So we're going to have a World Cup. I think you're right. It could happen like that. Yeah, I've heard rumors of Turkey and and one in Germany too, which would be pretty sick. I'm I'm down to go to both. They're new places. It sound, by the sounds of it, the rumors that I've heard too, yeah, it's new places. How can we be mad with new places? Turkey's where, um, isn't that where Eddie and Thomas went to like a few months ago? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I asked, I can't remember who, which I asked maybe Thomas. I think maybe when we had Thomas on the show, I asked him and yep. he said, it's, it's really cool there and stuff, really safe and everything. I'd be super stoked to go to Turkey. Same. A new yeah. place, new country. I think it'd be awesome to experience. By the sounds of it, they got some money if they're building that track, having him and Eddie out there to test it. I bet you the track's great. Yeah. Definitely beats going to Zolder. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely beats going to the same place to be oh my god long. uh can someone just light zolder on fire for me please <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kidding, but i just yeah i'm, I'm over going there we've been there it's so fine. many times that yeah. i was having a laugh with joris like uh before the grands actually when he came out to um when he was at where was i riding again or no where was i riding bellflower L flower. Thank you. Lost it there for a second. Anyways. And we were joking that like, we'd be very much okay if they just threw a world cup in Argentina again. Like, you know what? We've hated on going to Argentina. Don't care. I'd go there right now. Like I've said, it is the safest place in the world right now. <laughs> no, COVID can't get there. There's it's no far. way COVID is in Dallas. No, no, it's <laughs> no not chance. possible. No chance. It's there. It can't be. It's impossible. We're the only flight that flies there every year. So there's no way. <laughs> it's so funny i'd be not i'd actually be down to go to del estero again why not yeah honestly at this point we need races so why not yeah why not um i, I know that was the world's next year so yeah anyway what um speaking of tracks and because you said turkey i thought i'd bring up this this point that i told you it's not a sylvan social check-in just yet but um i saw that this uzbekistan is building a, a supercross track where the where is Uzbekistan? Like it's in the I, Middle East, but I don't know exactly where. Let me look it up. Yeah, look it up. Um, Uzbekistan. Quite funny that there it is because it's like there's snow. Oh, I think the phone line might have been ringing. Anyways, no, no, it can't be. Anyways, um, if it was, call back. I missed the call. Anyways, there's no one on the track. It looks cold as balls there in Uzbekistan. Where is it? You no, know, is the phone working? It must be. I think somebody just called it. I just missed it. So call back again. My apologies. We were chatting. Uzbekistan is, is between Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan. Boy, that'd be cool to go there. Wouldn't that be something, hey? 
Yeah, that'd be pretty I, cool. I saw some people hating in the comments um, about why they're putting a Supercross track in a place like this, why they're spending money on it. I, I was a little surprised by the comments. I mean, if, if a place like this is just getting a track in general, I mean, like we should be stoked they're putting in a Supercross track. That could create us to go there. Yeah. Anyways, live caller. Here we go. You are live on Coffee Chatter. Who are we talking to? What's up? It's Cam, yo. Cam. How Cam, 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 Cam. Cam, Cam, boy, are we glad you called. Cam, Cam, <laughs> Cam, Cam, Cam. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. We we have some so we have some just something to discuss with you, Cam. Uh, we thought we'd do this live on air. Let the people hear it. Um, let the people decide. Let the people decide if we're scumbags for saying it or if uh, they want to hate on you. They're going to have to pick a side here. Oh, dang, dude. This is kind of my anxiety going right now. Let's hear it. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll explain the situation. Cam, being an awesome friend, awesome, awesome coffee chatter guy, a chatty, if you will. He's a chatty. He, he sent us a package, a gift. Um, this was probably like two months ago. He asked for our address to send us a gift. And very much accepted the gift. We're not going to say no to a gift. Are you crazy? We're not going to say no. We get the, we get the gift. Uh, actually, I wasn't here. My parents had got the gift for us and ended up having to pay $50 in duty charges when the, when the package arrived. Oh, bro. I, I'm going to be for real with you. I honestly kind of thought you were kidding. But so originally when I got that, like, case is free, obviously. Like, I, like I'm sponsored. And... Like I sent that out and like tracking on that was like a hundred dollars or something. It was like close to a hundred and like, it was pretty. See, now, but, now you're already starting to make, make me feel bad about even bringing it up on air. <laughs> <laughs> so like, the, we didn't know what the package was. So at the time, I mean, you're always going to accept the package. Of course you're going to accept the package. You're going to accept the package. Of course you're going to accept the package. When, when we opened we, up the package. Here's the bottom line. We shouldn't pay for a gift. <laughs> i was gonna say we shouldn't pay 50 dollars for a gift oh i i mean obviously there was no intention for like it's a gift you shouldn't have to pay i agree but there was no intention of i didn't think you guys would have to pay i didn't i didn't think so we should not have to pay for our gift <laughs> we gotta let the people decide we gotta let the people decide james what do you think well, here's the thing also. I mean, like, I, don't, I can't really get mad at Cam because this, you know, when you, our borders right now, when you send something, it sucks. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and what if, what if this gift was not what it was? What if it was something different? What if it was, well, the gift, guys, it was energy drinks by a company that uh, we're not really sure how to pronounce it, so we're not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So we got a box of energy drinks. And neither, we're, not, we're not energy drink people, but... Coming from Cam, you know, he's an engineering guy supported by this company. I don't know. Sorry, I, sorry. Yeah, I don't know what to do with these energy drinks now. We're stuck on an impasse, it seems like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, geez. Cam, what, what do you think? I don't, I mean, the gift came from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys. You guys are pretty cool. But what, whatever you guys do with them, so be it. But, uh, I, it still blows my mind that you guys had to pay 50 for it. I think it was actually like 36. I think I said 50 because when we were chatting, I think you said something about $50. That's besides the point, though. <laughs> so, Cam, do you think we should have to pay the $36 or do you think you should pay the $36? Wait, say that one more time. I'm so sorry. Do you think we should have to pay the $36 or should you pay the $36? Uh, I mean, I paid like, I don't know, be a little 50 action if you ask me here. So those energy drinks are probably the best that you'll ever get. I mean, I know the coffee that you guys have is good, but, you know, the, the caffeine in those drinks makes a little bit better. But I, that, I just, I don't know, like, I guess I'll pay it if you really want me to, but the, uh, like, the thing for it and everything, like, expensive, so. <laughs> See, think, James, we gotta look at this objectively here i can't i can't do it i can't go through i can't go through forcing him to pay for it i can't do it so we so we I should pay for a gift 
I, it's dumb. I feel like, okay, here's the problem. Someone, someone and, gives you a gift on Christmas and says, oh, here's my gift. Give me 36 bucks. Yeah, but what if you don't know? I, I'm, I, I feel bad. Cam, if he's honest, he didn't know. He didn't know we were going to get charged. If you don't know. No, I, I, I truly didn't know. And I, I don't know. I think Canada, I think Canada's like, yo, like if you want to receive this gift, like you got to pay up, like you got to pony up. But we didn't know what the gift was. <laughs> we, there was a gift. We don't know what the gift was. We, I basically, my parents basically had to take a gamble. Be like, we're going to accept this package and hope it's something that's really fucking good to be paying $36 for <laughs> really <fucking> duty for. <laughs> do you, like, so when you guys, do you guys get many, I'm assuming you guys get many gifts, you guys are cool people, but when you guys do, do you guys usually pay like from, or do you guys like pay, like, is this the first time you ever paid? Um, you have to pay duty. It depends how much the value of the product is, I think, isn't it? Well, normally, I if I I don't buy stuff outside of Canada if I don't have to, so then we don't have to pay duty. Obviously, if I do buy things in the U.S., normally I try to ship it to a postal box I have in the U.S., but I can't get to the postal box because it's across the border and I can't drive across the border to go to the postal box. When you filled the thing out, Cam, did it did it did the post office say how much it was worth or the value of it? Mm, no, like when, when I was doing everything, she was like how much is this? And I was like, I, and I truly don't know because like I, I did things differently than everybody else does. So it's just like, I Twitter was free. Like it seriously was free. I'm so wrapped up. Right. Did you open it? That's weird. Cause like, when we send stuff to the U S it asks if it's a gift or the value of it. No. Yeah. The lady didn't even care. It was like, she wanted to know how much it weighed and like, she did ask to give value, and I was like, I don't know, it's free. Or and then I, then she was like, Well, check online, and I was like, Sure. So I checked, and quite honestly, like, she didn't care enough. Like, I told her, and, and it was expensive, but it was it was a weird, it was weird. Not expensive. She just puts two hundred dollars. <laughs> I I don't know what she put, but I can tell you that she didn't care, and she was like, Okay, whatever. I found a solution. I found a solution, Cam. It's gonna include you, and it's gonna include us. Everybody's gonna it's gonna be a win-win for everybody. All right. <laughs> You're gonna contact the the uh the brand that that is this company <laughs> of energy drinks. Maybe they want to sponsor the show for a couple of an episode or two, maybe more. And then maybe we oh, don't I like that. I like that. Yeah, they yeah. can sponsor the show for a show. Maybe, maybe they sponsor the show and then Cam doesn't have to pay for it. We pay for it, but we get a new sponsor on the show. You never how how about that? Do a one off. Yeah, I mean I try, I'll see. I'll see what happens. <laughs> You know, all we can ask for is an attempt, really, in this situation. Yeah. You know what? At the end of the day, though, Cam, we appreciate the gesture. That was really nice of you to see. We do appreciate it, Cam. Thank you for the gesture. We, Without we giving you a hard time, though, buddy. And I, but, I will, yeah, it's, this is great. I will, I will try the energy drink. It, dude, they're good. I, I say I'm addicted, dude, so they're good. Did you get my note in my stickers? Oh, yeah, they're in there, too, actually. I, it's in a pile, but, yeah, they're in there, too, I saw. Tori's going to put one somewhere. What? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It's got one of his little one of his little Cam Bramer stickers. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Put one over top of my bed so I just wake up and look at your face. <laughs> oh, classic. Oh, uh, thanks for calling in, Cam. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, I, I always enjoy these. I always enjoy watching uh, you guys and listening to you guys. So keep it. Hey, and uh, I was thinking too. At you know, a counter, you guys pay it off, but you guys come to like my home track national, which is South Park, and you guys can stay with me. So I feel like, you know. And we have all the energy drinks we want, baby. We'll step on <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> I have stacks on stacks. I can imagine. Sounds like a great deal. But thanks again, Cam. We appreciate it. Appreciate you listening all the time. And uh, yeah, it's always, it's always fun to have you call in. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. For sure. All right. Yeah, for sure. You easy. Later, Cam. Peace let this let this be a lesson although gifts are appreciated if it costs us duty we're going to sue you back to the stone age <laughs> we're going to shove that 36 dollars right back where it came anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um so speaking of the supercross series if you could have an ideal supercross series where would you put the stop safe oh we got another caller we do 
caller number two. You are live on air and coffee chatter. Who are we speaking with? Hello there. How are you doing tonight? Roger, is that you, buddy? Yeah. What's going on, Roger? How, how you been? Uh, doing all right. I'm in my first day of quarantine. Pretty happy with it. Tori's halfway through. He's, he's, he's working on it. Yeah, I'm going a little crazy. What's up with you, dude? Not much. So uh, you guys want to start a gambling site for BMX or a sports betting site? I mean, I mean, no, but talk to us about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like uh, low key, I kind of do, but yeah. Yeah, low key, it'd be cool. But yeah, what do you, that's kind of random, but I like it. Well, no, it was from our, from the Twitter stuff that you're posting about, I think it was oh. Connor or whatever. Someone was doing really good or whatever. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So what, what about I it? Almost call, I almost called all those titles. You called all of them, you think? I mean, I, not that I it was difficult almost, to call. I I almost called them. I'm still upset that Con Man got one. Who, did, is, who didn't you call? Didn't you call Con Man? No, you didn't like Con No, I, I said anybody but Connor. Oh, well, that was just a, that was just a bad gamble. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was dumb, man. <laughs> I'm just I mean, kidding. at the end of the day, it's one person against all, everybody from South America. Right. What? No, now you're talking about the pro <laughs> open. Oh, oh, shit. There was two races, right? There, no, Roger. There was one Grands. It was the Grand Nationals. The Grand Nationals? <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you watch? You weren't there, were you, Roger? No. Did Legal reasons. Did you watch? Uh, a tad bit. I saw Jay Smooth. You know, you ever, you ever played Mario Kart before? Yes, sir. I saw Jay Smooth get the golden star and then the golden star disappear when he tried to blast that one guy in the first turn. Oh, the first main. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah it kind of sucked he crashed, but Jay Smooth is running hot. I know. Too hot. Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite moment of the night? Seeing Cam Rimmer not win a title. <laughs> well, that's just that's just bringing negativity <laughs> on that, that was that was, that was that was cold blooded, Roger. I mean, you that's can't just under the table knife shot right there. <laughs> you just you just like went under the table and sawed his balls off right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Roger, that was me. Cam's a friend of the show. But I mean, I think the what was it? Cole Cole Fredericks on Sean Day last turn punt or whatever right for the Emma, for the boys 20 inch title right yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah that was that was a pretty good move yeah um roger how do you feel feel about paying the 36 dollars for us of import import fees for the gift from cam can you pay it for us how, how do you feel about that uh, roger's broke because roger got a new coach so is that a no or <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's a no because Apparently, Roger has a new coach. Who oh, think? yeah, Roger. Roger well, not yet, Roger. You said you're on a rugby team or something until the summer, you said. Uh, something like that. <laughs> All right, well, I know what's going on, but nobody knows what's going on behind the scenes. Big stuff's so, happening for Roger next year. Big stuff. Big stuff's happening. Big yeah. stuff. Double titles. Going to do what Cam Bremer couldn't do and actually won two titles in one year. All right, that's the second time you're throwing a friend, a chatty, under the bus here. Okay, we're gonna have to have I'm a head-to-head -head race off. I how they just come out of nowhere to full on just slap out, of the, <laughs> out of the rafters, right? I'm just coming out of the rafters for this one. I mean, the weather's nice today. Fuck Cam Brammer. <laughs> like he was nice enough to send us a gift, Roger. Yeah. Anyway, um, Roger, Roger, thanks for calling in, buddy. It's good to talk to you again, as always. Yeah, I'll probably hit you guys back up in a couple months. I mean, yeah, I'm looking I'm forward to forward to that radar. Yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Thanks for calling in, Roger. We'll talk to you soon. See you. Yeah. Bye bye. Later. All right. So we're we're talking we're talking favorite super, your ideal five supercross stops. I guess there's always five. four, right? No five. Five weekends. No five. We've had five the past yeah, few years. Yeah, yeah it's five. ten. Go five. Um, ideal five. This is a really great question. Hmm. Are we talking like does the does the uh, weather of the area? count like if i want to pick sweden i think everything take every, into account the weather yeah we're not in a hypothetical fantasy world where we're going to go to sweden with no wind okay what if i wanted to say norway that indoor race back in the day yeah yeah those all count yeah you can do all those yeah it's just like okay. the place as is you can't like alter weather okay 
I'm going to choose places I haven't been. Um, can I go not in order though? I don't know the order, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with it. Not in order. Do whatever the fuck you want. All right. Papandal. <laughs> Papandal, we're going there. Yep. We are, oh, where are we going? We're going to Medellin. Yeah. Yep. Super cross track there. We're going yep. there. Uh, we are going to Chula Vista. I like it. Yeah, we're going to Chula Vista. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shoot, what else do you want to go? You know, we're going to Argentina. <laughs> we're going to Del Estero. That's number four. You going to Abbotsford? Um, no, screw that. I'm not going to. And hey, we're going to Toronto. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd go to Toronto, even though a turn suck and the track needs re upping, but that facility is fantastic. I love that place. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there we go. My five. What's, right. what's your five? We're going. Uh, we're going to Brisbane. Oh yeah, good one. Hundred percent. We're, we're go, we got to go to Australia. Australia is awesome. We got to yeah. go to Australia. Yep. Um, we're going to Fréjus, France, southern France. Okay. Oh, but that was going to be on mine. I, that I, one was so good. We're going. We're going to. Uh, we're going to Medellin. We're going back to Medellin. We're okay, going. Uh, we're, we're going to Norway. Yeah, yeah. That one, Nor yeah, Norway World Cup. That was sick. We're going there. That was potentially be on my list. Yep. And we're going to Papandal. Papandal. Papandal is just a staple. It doesn't matter how quotation mark boring that place is, the track, whatnot. Like it's the best place racetrack to have to, to race. No, you know? and the crowds, the crowds like cool and stuff. And yeah, it's good. You can't not have a Papandal race. Unfortunately, I couldn't, I don't know. I couldn't fit Chula Vista in there for some reason, even though I love Chula Vista. Which Chula Vista would you have? I would have the Rio track, just rebuild it. Okay. Yep. Just re ideally the 2013, 14 track. Okay. But I know I nowadays it'd be too small, um, but I would love to have the Chula Vista Beijing 2020, 2011, like ages of the track. Yeah. Maybe cool. Never got to race those big first rate jumps. So that would have been a uh, cool. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's where I'm going. I think I like it. I like the choices. I like those ones. Those are good. Yeah. Uh, we got, we got Afro Bob in here saying Woodward East. Okay, bro. It's funny. I was <laughs> just on the mosquitoes Instagram today, looking at his videos and he posted a video of Bob winning a, a moto or a semi or something at Woodward East. Oh, really? I watched Bob today at Woodward East. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. Too, is that? yeah. Um, so, yeah, you see the next note? I'm just looking uh, at it now. Yeah, should we get – I got a social media check-in quickly. Just to, It's a comment. Oh, we can do, let's do true and false, too, after that. Okay, quick social media check-in. Um, saw a post from Derek Betcher on Facebook, and I'm only saying that this, this whole social media check-in is just because it gave me a laugh. He was talking about how he got home from the Grands, and because he was wearing a mask, he didn't have that Tulsa lung, as people say. Yeah. Um, so he's like, it was, it was great, whatever. Um, I, th I think you were saying something about COVID. I think he was asking who else was feeling the same, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't yeah, remember yeah. the whole thing. I should have read it more. But then below that, the first comment I read that was popped up was from Brooke Crane. And it says something about, uh, yeah, actually, I got a call and like four people I know have COVID. <laughs> oh, shit, really? <laughs> something like that. And it was like a nice, like, you, I don't know. I would consider it a positive post about the grands and whatnot. And, um, I think he was asking like if anybody else got sick or whatever, trying to post that like USA BMX did a great job hosting the event. And everyone, all of us are probably wondering like who out there got COVID from going to the Grands. We don't know because no one's really going to post about it. And then I saw that and I had a laugh. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, hope, I mean, hopefully no one, but I mean, realistically, I'm sure there's people who did, but um, yeah, hope they're, hope they're going to be okay. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about this today. Do you think an elite could win? An elite, say, say an elite men. I think he could win without going to the gym. He could do any other training he wants, but he can't go to the gym. Okay. I got a lot of questions to determine this. A lot of questions to determine it. Um, is this pro, is this person in elite, this pro, do they, are they already? You always, you always do this. You want so much background <laughs> info. I need to make an educated guess. I can't just. Rhyme with Schmoner Schmeels. <laughs> I mean, like, are we talking about somebody that's already been a winner on the tour or somebody that's coming up and just can never use the gym? Someone who's already an elite and who's fast. Yes. Uh, yes, they could win a, an elite race. They could. They'd have to do a lot of other things, but they could, yeah. I'm thinking no. 
You know, Although Nick, Nick proved it back in the day you could, but that was 10 years ago, say. Yeah. I are don't know these days if you can. I don't think you could. Are we talking World Cup or are we talking ABA? Both. Both. Yeah. I mean. Like, you, like not a rinky-dink little home little race. Like you could win on like a USA BMX or Euro round or World Cup. I don't yeah. think I don't think they could without any gym. I think it'd be really tough because yeah, you're going to lose a lot of strength over time. Um, everyone that's winning is strong as shit. <laughs> like Isn't an incredible experiment. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah, it would it be really hard to do for somebody like to get somebody to do that? But yeah, it would. You, you might be able to, cause if you really wanted to work on strengths, like you just go to the velodrome and just do huge ass gear sprints and it'd just be specific strength instead of strength in the gym. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You, you might be able to, you could do so much stuff with changing gears and sprints and stuff. You could do so many different things. You'd have to, you'd be on the bike a lot. Oh like, boy. Would you ever <laughs> instead of doing like a gym session and sprints throughout the week, blah, blah, blah. You'd be like, okay, we're doing massive gear sprints this morning, small gear this afternoon, going to the track. Okay. Now we got to go back on the bike uphill stuff. Like, yeah, you got to do a shit ton of stuff. I think you could still be fast, but I don't, I don't think you could win. No, no way. What do you think? Like, theoretically, are you just, are you just losing? Cause you're losing all the strength. Is that why you think that you're not going to be your, your neuromuscular system isn't going to be stimulated the same way. You're not going to like, you're not going to improve. You're not going to improve. Like your, your neuromuscular system isn't going to adapt. And yeah, like it's just, you, it won't happen. You're not going to be able to build explosive power or strength or different things you can build in the gym that you can can't on the bike. I would say. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who we could get to do this you can experiment. Stimulate yourself. That's the word I was looking for. What if you could do this like a is it an isometric stimulation? Yeah, I I don't it's not really the same thing. No. No. That's more of a feeling, would you say or no? I mean, I think it's it is similar, but it's not the same load. It's not the same intensity. It's not the same stimulation. I don't think, yeah, you wouldn't be able to. Okay. Although you could guys could win doing gym and no sprints, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I think. Cause every time you go on the track, you sprint. Yeah, that's true. I think too. And like, yeah, a lot of the times when you're mid season, you're not doing that many sprint sessions. Like it changes, things change all the time. You do your bike and then you do sprints on the track. Yeah. If you just did gym and sprint and track work, you think you'd be fine. You could just, if you really wanted to, you could change different gears on the track and stuff, but you probably don't need to do sprints to be, to win. Yeah. I wonder who we could get to try this one. <laughs> I think there's a lot of guys actually who don't do that many sprints off the track and do most of it on. But to somebody to do no gym at all, that'd be tough to do. <laughs> who wants to do it in an Olympic year? We need a participant. <laughs> that'd be nuts. Robert says he'll volunteer. So then, or who will? Afro Bob. He said he'll volunteer. Uh, I already smoked him at Abbotsford, so no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to worry about it no, it isn't. No, it's not all right should we do true and false yeah i'm currently looking for my old true and false or i wrote some down for last show but i can't find them right now and it's this is bad well we, you gotta just wing it then let's start let's have at it baby god damn it god damn it god damn it god damn it ah oh, crap are you sure i'm yeah, really bad at this you just gotta go for it then or Where? we can just we can just skip it all together then no, I, I like it, but like I should have, I wrote it down. I had it. I had notes. All right. Well, let's just go then. You got to think of something on the spot. Okay, fine. Let's just wing it. Let's see how good I do. All right. Intro. Oh, crap. See, I'm not even, I'm not even prepared. No, you're all little yeah. over there. I'm all over the map right now. Okay. It's just really frustrating. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me start because I have one in my head and then I'll just go from there. All right, go for it. I once dropped your toothbrush in the toilet at a race. True. Ah, that's false. <laughs> I was going to be like, what fucking race? <laughs> uh, I was, I was thinking if I want that how to be false. So bad. Coming, how is this just coming out now? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's, a really, that's actually a really good one. Thanks. I thought it was a good one. Yeah. That's one of the ones I had written down somewhere, but I can't find it. So. All right. At the old rate at the Manchester world cups, Liam had a trap bar with a bunch of weights in that private room beside the hill. And he would do a stim lift before the uh, races, like the day of the morning of the morning of, um, 
oh, I could totally see him doing that. But I, uh, no, I don't think, I think it's false. Yeah, it's false. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's false. Yeah. It, I could see it happening, but I just couldn't, couldn't see it happening. I remember PH saying one day, he's like, I wonder if they're doing that. <laughs> It'd be interesting, though. I know. Yeah. Shit. I'm still looking for my things, hoping I would find it by now, but I didn't. No, you just, you got to just go for it. Okay. Um, I once had a flat oh. tire. But- what? <laughs> <laughs> No, say it again. Say it. Say I, it. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what I was saying. Humor me. All right. I once had a flat tire before the first round of the World Cup, but Adam just pumped it up the bottom of the hill, and I still made it around and qualified. Hmm. <laughs> don't look at the camera that much. I don't know if this is. Um, yeah, probably true. I think it's false. Actually, it might have happened. I don't really know, but I think it's I, it's false in my head. It, I, it can, might not have happened to you, but I've definitely done that. People have had this happen multiple times. Yeah, where you just, I mean, if, you yeah. if you don't have time and it's a slow leak, fuck, just pump it up. Didn't you do that in like Papandal or something? I might have. I've had a lot of weird things happen in Papandal. A lot of cramping issues, a lot of pumping issues. Um, it could have. <laughs> it very well could have. All right, next one. BMX Live TV is planning on hosting actual like BMX shows to expand content in the Middle East. Ooh. Um, no, that's false. You went way too yeah, deep. That was really believable, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was very believable, but it's just there's too much now. Yeah, okay. No. Yeah, good one. All right, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> I, I got nothing. You're putting me on the spot and I'm so nervous. Hey, you got to just panicking. off the cuff it. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, give me a topic. Just give me, pick a topic. And I'll think of something true or false. BMX. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've once changed the angle of my handlebars four times, three times before the beginning of a race in the same day. False. That's probably true. I think it's true. <laughs> I've changed my handlebars way too many times. I did have to track. <laughs> So a bellflower when I was there, I was doing some with my handlebars. I changed it before practice just because I was like, oh, I feel like they need to be forward more. I did one lap of practice, went back to the car, put them back to where they were and continued practicing. I don't know why. I'm just an idiot and I just did it. But yeah. Once at a World Cup, Adam put the wrong tire size on my rear wheel and I didn't realize until after the race weekend. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh. I, I think this is true. I think it happened. I think I remember something about this, but... You, yeah, you didn't realize until you got home or something, right? True. You're asking me. You're asking. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, it happened, right? It happened. It's true. No, it's true. That happened. Yeah, it's true. And like Papa in 2016, he put, I think I gave him 175 and a 185, meaning put the 185 on the front, 175 on the back. And he mixed it up. So he put the 175 on the front and the 185 on the back. And I didn't notice until I got home I put, and I looked at my bike and I was like, Wait a minute, why the fuck do I have a 185 on the back? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. Classic. Um, still been looking for my notes. Still not there. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I once <laughs> drank so much water and Gatorade trying not to cramp that I puked it out a lap right after the lap. I mean, this is probably true, yeah. Yeah, this one's true. I was down in jugs of water in Gatorade in Argentina one year, just trying not to cramp in the heat. Finished my lap, was about to start cooling down. I was like, nope, can't do this. Went to the bathroom, puked it all out, and just continued on with my day. Seriously? Yeah, it was just so much water and Gatorade in me that it just, yeah, stupid. But yeah, it happened. Once in a World Cup semi, my quad started cramping down the last straight while in a, <laughs> down the last straight while in a qualifying position. <laughs> I know where this happened, and this happened in Rock Hill, and it's true. Did it? it actually, happened in Papadell. But... Oh, okay. Why did I think? I for some reason I thought Rock Hill because I remember when you said you were so tired one time. Oh like, boy, I don't know what happened that lap. You were just wet noodling it around. That oh lap. my god, I thought I wasn't gonna. I thought I wasn't legitimately wasn't gonna make it to the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> From the second turn, I thought I wasn't gonna make it. You're like, I, I'm not gonna make it to the line. I can't get I there. I don't know what happened. Yeah, that was in 2016. We had the night race, right? 
2016 uh, yeah. yeah yeah after yeah. the after the O show so you know we used to, they did it that year that you had like you ran your motos and they had like an hour and a half two hour break in the quarter yeah so i don't know if i didn't warm up properly or what but i wasn't actually tired because we just ran three laps or whatever yeah yeah and so I'm leading the quarter and I jump into the second turn and I go to pedal out and I was just all of a sudden my legs just felt like bags of sand. <laughs> you know, so and they just weird. like feel like they're like you're so tired and they're seizing. And I was it like, just, holy fuck. You just you know it's happening. There's nothing you can do about it at that point. You're mid-race. I was just holding on and then to the finish line, I was just pedaling like a wet noodle. <laughs> and the weirdest thing like after that lap the semi in the main i was fine i wasn't like tired i must have just not warmed up properly enough or something i don't know that's body's a weird thing man i know I, so, weird. so weird like i've told you i've had cramping stories like crazy i had one of the cramping stories i had was in argentina mid, mid in the gate call i was cramping my legs were locked and i was trying to like squat it out mid call <laughs> is, that, is that the one where you didn't really gate yeah i didn't really, i couldn't gate because i was my legs were cramping <laughs> yeah but then halfway down the hill as soon as i started getting going it kind of went away and I just went, went on with my race. And <laughs> no, no, no. I remember watching, I think, because it was in the pre-motos, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was in the pre-motos. Yeah, yeah. Day, I yeah. I think I was watching at the hotel, like on the computer and I was like, what the fuck's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't he gate? <laughs> it's like, you didn't really gate. You kind of like half gated. And... I was like half squatted on my bike because if I stood up straight, my legs would lock out. So I was trying to like half squat while they're cramping and then like gate goes, and you're like, oh, I got to go. And then it's just, yeah. So I never actually had that situation where I'm cramping in the gigs. I didn't actually, I only cramped a few times probably. What, what, like, what are you thinking or trying to do in that instance where your legs are locked? Like, are they, are they like straight locked or are they bent and locked or what's the, like, what's happening? Like, so like, if I stand up, they will like, if I stand up tall, they'll like, they'll, they'll cramp and like locked straight. Oh. And then if like, if I can like, I've had it so much, like it hurts. So I, I know what it's like. And I just put up with it. Yeah. But you just like bend your legs. You muscularly have to just bend your legs and you can feel them like grabbing and pulling, but it's better that than locked out straight. And like, to be honest, like if it doesn't uncramp, you're really fucked because I've had it in Papandale one year where I started walking up the back of the hill. And this was actually the third quality mode of one of the days. And they started cramping up the hill. So I got in the gate, they cramped. I race down the first straightaway and like every pedal stroke, you can feel uh, like tugging on your quads. Yeah. And then once you jump in the air, when I was, this was in Papandale, when I jump in the air, my legs would lock out. I was doing like locked out airs. And I remember like I did it on the triple, I jumped the triple into the first turn. Oh my God. Yeah. My freaking legs, like I nose dived into the first turn, but like in control kind of, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And then I remember coming out of the turn, I was still in like fourth or fifth in this quality moto jumped the second i must have been a third or fourth jumped the second straight and this is when there was the berm jump or the, the crossover in Papandal. and right before the crossover i was like this is too dangerous like i'm i'm locking out every jump i can't do this and Ooh. i think i rolled the crossover and thankfully there was a crash i only went back to like fifth and i had to roll the rest of the lap and somehow still qualified for the next day but it's like you're, you're helpless out there there's nothing you yeah, can do there's nothing you can do like you and it's, it's so gnarly probably in that position because you're sitting in the gate literally and all you're thinking about is when you stand up, you know, you're going to cramp. It's exactly what it is. Like, you, yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. You're trying to like flush your legs out. You're trying to shake them. You're trying to stretch. And then as soon as that gate calls going and you have to go stand up, you're like, fuck. And everyone Boom. else just focuses on a start. And that's just the fucking last thing on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you're not worried about it one bit. You're like looking around. People are focused and you're like panicking in your head. Like, fuck, just, what's going on? What's going on? Straight survival mode. The guy's like, all right, here we go. And you're like, I, I literally can't fucking do this. <laughs> <laughs> I literally can't. Like, we can't, guys, we can't do this. I'm not ready. <laughs> that's can't so do it. shit. That's so, like happened to me once in Phoenix. It was the first race of the year. Like five mm -hmm. years, like I think it was 2016. It was really hot. And before the semi, I was just trying to warm up. And every time I pedal, like both quads would grab. and then. I would like bend over and my hamstrings would grab and I was like, fuck it. I'll just get in the gate and go for it. And luckily I didn't cramp, but it's weird. Like you don't cramp when you go, but you somehow do before sometimes. Yeah. And that's why it's gotta be something like with your nerve system, because it's like, yeah, yeah. Not, a lot of the times like, like there, like you just start going and all of a sudden it's gone. It's like, what, what just happened? I know it's a nerve. It's more at that point. It's more of a nervous system thing, I think. Or sometimes like if it's, if you change weather or if it's the first race of the year, your nervous system goes into a bit of shock and can cause cramping. It's not actually hydration. Yeah. Um, Very weird. But yeah. It happened to me that one year popping up, done the last straight. I was in like second in the semi the first day and I was jumping, you know, those like peaked out little step ups and shit on the last straight. Yeah. I could feel my quads grabbing and I was like, no, 
<laughs> no, we cannot have this right now. Down, Bessie. <laughs> Down, Bessie. Can you imagine Not you been here. Not great been here. All day. You're in second on the last grade in a semi. You're going to make the main. Your quads grab and just fucking nose pick over the bars. What? Like, it's so dangerous. That could very well happen. How pit? You're so close. <laughs> <laughs> you are so close. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely brutal. But yeah, that happens like, happens like Corbin cramps. I don't know if he still does, but he had a lot of problems with that. I think like, I remember at the world cup in Abbasur, he cramped over the kink and flipped, flipped the bars. That was gnarly. Hey, in the semi. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about like random situation from terrible timing for it to happen. Holy smokes. Yeah. And it's not like, or people see people cramp and just like, Oh, just power through. It's like, you can't, you can't power through cramping and it's got nothing to do with being like tough or something. No, it just happens. Like you, you can't adjust it. It's not like a hurt arm, like a, a scrape or a sprain. No. It's not like that. So. <laughs> Didn't know, wasn't that first year you went to Rock Hill for the World Cup? Or <laughs> you walking up the hill and you start cramping and you're like, you said out loud, you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, here we go. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's so good because you. I know when it's coming. Like as soon as you start walking, you can feel it twitching and it wants to, it just, it's on the track and there it goes. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> Did someone look at you like, what the fuck? Probably. I, I, there's been some weird times where I've like been doing shit and like somebody looks over me and like has been like, are you okay? I somebody, I, some, I swear somebody did it to me race. They're like, are you okay, bro? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not okay. Like I'm cramping and we have to race. I'm not okay. No, I'm a fucking flight risk out there. <laughs> fucking flight risk. It's brutal. Um, um, I got I to say, speaking of cramps, so you know, I always have Pedialyte, uh, the baby drink to have. There's yeah. a company out there now that makes a drink that's exactly what Pedialyte is in the same style bottle and everything, except it's for people that are hungover and it's not found in the baby aisle anymore. It's a new company. And I think that's hilarious. I'm, not, I'm surprised it hasn't come out sooner. Honestly, I am too. Yeah. So many people drink it and they have to, yeah, it's just, I think a lot of people do at least. Great Pedialyte is delicious. I'm a blue raspberry guy myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, blue raspberry is good too. Those are the two best ones, I think. So good. So good. Um, all right. We can do some uh, one words. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's do it. These notes I do have. You want me to start or you want to start? I'll start. All right. Go for it. Coffee. Delicious. I had, oh, I had my first latte again from my home machine in three weeks. So good this morning. It made my morning. Oh, it is a treat, eh? I I was in I was on the Keurig for three months in Cali. My espresso hit different when I got home. Tell me seriously though, right? Yeah. Yep. Side note, my cat's crying in the background. He wants dinner and uh, he's gonna have to wait. I'm just saying music this uh Tondrick Davis, Music City BMX in the house. I just said, What's up, Nashville? That's cool. Awesome. Thanks we had doing. a lot of comments in the uh, the chat here. It was very awesome. Uh, T B came in the chat, Afro Bob was in there um thunder midget was telling us a lot of different pointers and notes as we were going through but we just never got to them yeah thanks a lot guys thanks for yeah. uh, contributing in the chat we see you guys in the chat we appreciate it kyle grass says congratulations uh, congratulations on retirement james um i'm not retired but you know i appreciate you sending a thanks out even though i'm not yeah well, why does he think you're retired not really sure um romain my you big horse bro just an asshole, a really mean person. No, just an absolute dickhead. Bad friend. <laughs> Bad friend. <laughs> Complete opposite, guys. Complete opposite. The only person I hate more is Sylvan. I hate that guy. Damn it, Tori, I'm not ready because we didn't play the exit music, and I hate that guy. There I, it forgot is. Play, I forgot to play the exit music, so I One, didn't. One more time, because seriously, though, Sylvan, fuck that guy. I hate that guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> um, next one. World Championship medals. Prestigious. Prestigious. Yeah, I was thinking about it today. I hadn't thought about, I mean, obviously the, I have my World Championship silver medal framed here on my wall. So I walk past it every day, but I haven't actually thought about like this, that, that medal in a long time. But I was thinking, I just started thinking about it today. It's actually really cool to have one because it's like, it's not, I mean, it's not that many people have them, you know, like it's not like an Olympic medal, but it's like, it's, almost harder to win than an Olympic medal in a way. You know what I mean? I mean, I know Not where you're getting to win an Olympic medal, but like, I know where you're getting it. World championship medal is so gnarly because there's so many fast guys. 
so many people could be there entering that race. It's yeah. so prestigious. Yeah, yeah. 100% I guess mean. it's not, I shouldn't say it's harder, not harder to win or harder to win the Olympic medal because it isn't, but just it's, it's, it's yeah. extremely difficult. Yeah, it's like one of the highest things in our sport. So I was thinking about that today, which is pretty cool. Like the 1% of the 1% ever get to win one of those things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So very, very good. So just remember. Gold medals and gold medals. Yeah, we can't all be like Mariana, you know? Yep. <laughs> Natalia Suvarova. Blonde, blonde Russian. I'm not sure I've really talked to her before. Not a whole lot. I can't say I really have either. I think, I don't, I, so yeah, that's why I don't really have like, you know, normally we have it. Yeah. I don't know backstory. why I thought of her. I think I saw her story on like on our coffee chatter account or whatever. So, you know, it's nice to mix it up. You think she's listened to a coffee chatter episode? Do you not think she's one, not it? one, not one, like when she's been hanging out with another BMXer, like not one. I think, um, Caddy Chev. I think has. I think we've we've discussed this. We think Caddy Chef has listened to an episode before. He's a cool bro. He's a cool dude. I want to see a sign from from Team Russia or someone Russian that they've listened to Copper Chatter. I want to see a sign. Give us a sign. Not I, a like. Just a like doesn't count because that's different. Give us a sign. Give us a sign. Give us a story. Give us something to know that we're we're in Russia. It's all we want to know. Somebody from Russia, please. It's all I want to know. Like you're just say you're like I just want to know that we've made it to Russia. That would be so sick. Yeah. So sick. Uh, quarantine. Um, house arrest. Yeah, that is house arrest, isn't it? What it feels like, yeah. Yeah. We're, I'm enjoying it so far. It's been one day, so my answer is going to change. My answer <laughs> one thing. My answer is going to change very quickly in the next few days. But when you are forced to be inside compared to having the luxury of being inside, it's, it's jail. Yeah. Jeremy Smith. Jay Smooth. Um, I think of I think it was in Texas one year. I got lined up beside the dude like five, four or five times out of six motos. Dude, that year, I feel like you guys raced every single moto together. <laughs> <laughs> Don't understand. We were just lined up every gate beside each other in every moto of ABA race. It felt like it was un- insane. Dude, it's crazy though. Literally, you guys remember that was 17. You guys raced each other every single moto, pretty much that whole USA BMX year. I know. I was baffled by, and every time I wasn't. After a while, it's just like, oh yeah, what moto are we in? <laughs> I know. So weird. Yeah. Oh, what was I going to say? I completely lost my train of thought. Cool. Okay. That's all right. It happens. Um, Afro Bob. Oh no, it's you. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Do I'm going to just Afro Bob T. <laughs> uh, fucking smoked him in Abbotsford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did, T. Yeah, you did, buddy. That's something to live on. Yeah, I said this before though. I'm just really stoked I got to race him. That is really cool. I think. Yeah, like I'm, I'm really stoked I was able to race him. Yeah, I feel like I never really got to. I wasn't <laughs> at that level then. Yeah, because you're, you're, yeah, yeah, because that was my first, no, first year. That would be my second year of elite, I guess. Yeah. 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 Um. Oh, this says TB. I think I meant to say TV. Oh well, TB. I think Tyler Brown. Yeah. Okay, we'll go with TB. <laughs> we'll go with the vet pro champ uh three the back to back to back vet pro champ he was in our in our comments of the live youtube chatter so that was cool to see tb yeah very hard worker very hard worker he is yep yeah. oh this one vancouver weather oh, just the worst like it's just Dude. the worst it just it's it's fugly out there we have the worst weather in the world right now only like in the winter, like Vancouver is so beautiful in the summer and then the winter rolls around and there's a reason why we always go down to San Diego and get out of here. Like it's not even, it's not that cold. Like it's not, it's above freezing. It's like five degrees, probably 10, I don't know, five degrees say high of eight. Yeah. Of eight degrees. It's not even that cold Celsius people before you Fahrenheit people just fucking lose your mind. <laughs> um, and it's, but it's just raining gray and dark all the yeah. time. It's funny. So I woke up this morning. I slept in a long time. It was amazing. The, 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 the lighting never changed from like when I woke up to let my cat out at like 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. when I woke up. It never Dude, changed. It's so dark in the morning. Like I'll wake up, it's like I woke up this morning, like 7 45, and it was like a little bit light, but I was like, I was probably like really early in the morning. I checked, it was like almost eight o'clock. It's insane. And then three o'clock today, it's going dark. I know. Three o'clock, bro. <laughs> like you got two hours of grayness outside. Like, uh, this place is just a hellhole. Gosh, Vancouver, I love you so much, but like you're really pissing me off. Right now. Spring, summer, fall, it is just beautiful. It, it seriously, yeah, yeah, but just like 
November, probably November to like beginning of March is terrible. Yep. Brutal. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, you're up. Kim Hayashi. Um, I don't know if I, like, I remember her in races being pretty dominant. Yeah. She was the top elite woman for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to, I don't really know her at all. Um, but I remember, yeah, seeing races and she was just dominating. She was really cool too. We were teammates on Redline when I was just a kid. As that is pretty cool. Yeah. I, I remember like, always being a red line person. Yeah. Yeah. I was just a kid. I was on, I was teammates with her. I thought that was pretty cool. She was always really nice. Even, even when I was like just a little kid. That's so cool. All right. I'm going to let my cat out because he's crying after this one. So when I say it, I'll just back, uh, Samantha cools. She was awesome. Like really good Canadian BMX there. I think she, uh, are you putting your headphones back on? Like she was a really good Canadian BMXer. Like, she paid she like was probably the first she was wasn't she the first Canadian to ever do like accomplish a ton on the international stage and really like kind of put Canada on the map yeah she was like outstanding yeah she was I was I think I would agree with the yeah. last that I heard she was like that first person to do that and that was really cool first person from Canada to really like put Canada on the map BMX world and accomplish like incredible things in the world stage mm-hmm. very cool you're okay. <laughs> no I Oh yeah, San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. San Diego. Um, I miss it. I miss yeah. it. Like you're, it's still kind of your home. It, it's not really my home lately, and I miss. I miss those times. It was. Yeah, fuck. I guess you, you didn't go to San Diego at all when you were there, were you? Did you? Now this year, well, no. And the last time I was there for, was for Nick's wedding, which it felt good to be back. And last year I didn't go in the winter. Didn't go. Not. Yeah, I wasn't there this trip. It's been a while. Oh wow! Your last time you were there would have been next wedding, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I miss I miss our our time staying in a house and then going to I miss going to Tommy's with Sean at his place for Saturday. I know, like our routine a few years ago was so oh, cool. Yeah. I, I love those Saturday nights. I know. I, I mean, it's cool because we just train and then I can hang out of the house, go watch Supercross at Tommy's. Yeah. Those yeah. are the days. Oh, those, those were the days. <laughs> now it's like your home. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah uh papendal i love papendal i i think Pap- papendal is a special place for me yeah i can, i get that yeah i, I papendal is a special place for me i love papendal I, I look forward to going there whenever there's a right we have the world cup because the hotel the the breakfast and the track everything yeah i got a lot of awesome memories in holland it's always been special for me and i like the, the people are really cool i like i love the culture i got good buddies with a lot of dutch people through yep. BMX and stuff that are just awesome people. And the culture is really cool. I think everyone's really supportive of the sport and they're really, Holland really loves sport in general. Like they really support any kind of sport. I think it's awesome. They really get behind it. It's really cool. That's yeah, I agree. It's really cool that they do. And everything is always like really taken care of. Like it's really such a clean country. True. It yeah. is very clean. That's why it's nice to go there. Yeah. Yeah. I love the one year at 2017, bottom floor the room mattress <laughs> outside the window having a time out in the grass that's why we're in the bottom floor we didn't even use the door to the hotel we just for practice and stuff we just go through the window of the hotel <laughs> <laughs> bikes were left outside the room at all times just hop in and out of the window it was great that was awesome doesn't that seem like a lifetime ago now dude I, it seems like a different world i know i missed that that's oh, so fun yeah so much different yeah you just get kitted in the room and just go for practice that's sick that was awesome. Love yeah. that. Love that. Uh, yours, Harmson. You know what? It's just a good looking dude. Good beard. <laughs> good, good. You know what? I don't know. I, I guy, straight guy, good answer. looking dude. I wasn't expecting that answer. I mean, it's just, he's got a great beard. I'm a, I'm a beard guy. I look at people with beards. No homo, yeah, but he's a great looking dude. He's a horse. He is a horse, actually. Though. Yeah. Feel bad for speaking of Papendal, I'll feel bad for him that one year still. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I forgot about that. Yeah, I wait, wait, waited for me to bring it up, but like, damn. I know, I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Olympics. Um, I don't have any words really for it. I, I, I know why. Like, it's just, yeah. it's the Olympics. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't really Iconic. have any words. It's special. It's in such, it's, it's so weird. Like, it's in such its own category of racism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not even, I don't even think it's in the BMX like industry. It's just like in its own fucking thing completely. 
I agree. It's more than a, it's more than a sport. Yeah. Like it's just, it's more than racing and it's just like, yeah. It's so yeah. It's like, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Different, yeah. but the same, 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 a little different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, world cup podium. Legit. Something I wanted to be at accomplish. And I think if you've been on a world cup podium, you're, you're damn legit. You got to be a bad motherfucker to be on a world cup podium. Straight up. Yeah. Because first of all, to be getting through a whole world cup day to get in the final and then to be able to put it together when it counts to get on, on the podium, you're fucking legit. Yeah. Like you don't podium by mistake. No, you no. Really like, you re- like there's too much, too many rounds. The stuff could happen. Like someone might get a bit lucky and get on the podium, but you don't, you don't fluke into a podium. You really don't. No, those are some of the yeah. Those are my some of my happiest moments in my life. My World Cup podiums. No doubt, like that's it all comes. That's when it all comes together, and you can just like breathe it in, take it in, celebrate. You you did your job. You you went in there and accomplished what you came to do. It kind of sucks. Yeah, exactly. It's a perfect way to describe it. And it's kind of sucks too when you make the main and then you don't podium or you're close. Like you do, you were so close. <laughs> you like you accomplished so much to get to that point, <laughs> and then nothing. Yeah, I remember. I remember the, the Manchester 2013 was my first podium. Yeah, and, but I remember like after this, after making the main, I remember thinking to myself, "Fuck, it takes so much work to get that, get to this point. Like, I just fucking need a podium." I can, yeah, seriously. You know, I was like, right? "It takes so much work to get to this point to even have a yeah. chance." And honestly, though, right? It's like yeah. ah, it's grueling. It's insane. It, to just to get the chance it takes so much work. Yeah, in uh, in Argentina, the one year uh, in the final, I was a spectator. <laughs> I got, I was so bummed. Like I didn't even race. I was in the final uh-huh. and I got last and I was just like lane eight on the outside, never even in the mix. And it's just like, cool. Like I did all that work for that. And it was just a letdown. Yeah. I know what you mean. So like that's the same, like you put all that work and you want to be in the, you want to be fighting for that podium. I kind of feel like that way sometimes about the Olympic final, like I ended up fifth or whatever, but I kind of got cut, like cut off and was shuffled back and stuff. And I was like in last yeah. and I ended up coming back through, but it's kind of like, I would have loved to be like right in the thick of it, right off the, you know? It's like, yeah, you didn't, you, your battle was kind of after the second turn. So you never got to yeah, battle. Exactly. That first yeah, I know. I, like, I get that. I'd rather have just been like racing my balls off with other guys, like right in the thick of it, but racing, yeah. racing's racing. It is. Um, oh, your turn. What'd you put in there? Macronomics? <laughs> Let's try and say it again. Oh, macroeconomics. There you go. I was like, wait a second macroeconomics got my exam on uh, thursday baby right on do i want to know what it's about it's basically the study of like national economy oh okay it's actually it's pretty breaking down economics into very macro yeah, level yeah because yeah, i took microeconomics last year like over the summer so i'm taking macro now it's actually it's really complicated but it's really interesting to actually you learn like what causes like exchange rates or inflation or the price of price level of things and what affects it. It's pretty cool. Actually. That is pretty cool. I'd be, yeah. I'd actually be pretty interesting. Yeah. It's really, it's really applicable too. It's not like the million other things in school you learn that are useless. It's actually very <laughs> applicable. Sokotoa. <laughs> how, <laughs> how much smaller is a macro than a micro? Is that a thing? What's it like? How, how small is a macro? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know. All I, right, want say, I want to say one to a thousand. I don't know why I think that. I, I was going to say something around there. But... I'm thinking gram to kilogram. Okay, yeah. Gram to kilogram. Yeah. Good way to good way to think about it. PS4. I wish I had one right now. Gosh darn it! In about two days, you're going to really wish you had one. I I bet I am. Yeah. In a couple of days, the relaxing factor is going to get not as cool, and you're going <laughs> to. <laughs> You mean that day I spent on the couch all day, I'm not going to enjoy in 14 days of the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, just brain fog and just like a fucking bump on a log on the couch. Yeah. Uh, podcasting. It's fun. I enjoy doing it. I, I enjoy doing it when we're in a situation that we have everything going according to plan, unlike the one show when shit was not going to plan with the Wi-Fi and I did not. I was not a happy camper. No, but I mean, we do our best. We do our best. Uh, where'd my thing go? Um, training in the rain. Oh boy. <laughs> just, just another day in Vancouver. It's another day in paradise, baby. <laughs> <laughs> another day in paradise, baby. It's what we do all the time. And I'm sick and tired of it sometimes. It sucks ass. Done it so much this year. 
that we've done so much, we've done it so much in our life. I've done it so much this year. It just sucks. I know. Like I look outside now and I'm, and when it's pouring rain, I'm so happy I don't have to go and just do sprints in the rain. Like it's just, uh, it's so nice not having to do that anymore. Everything gets wet. There's no, like, it's normally, just, you don't have a dry place to sit normally. I try to sit on the back of my car with a towel over me, but then the towel gets wet. My, my gloves are soaked. My shoes are wet. My pants, that's just all awful. I would just sit in the garage and then just go for the sprint and come back in. That's good. Yeah, see, that's good. I might have to do that out of my, uh, my front path now. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Australia. One of my favorite countries, I think. Yeah, hey. Yeah, they're really, I love Australia. It's so nice. Mm-hmm. I'd, love to go back. I'd love to go back to the Gold Coast. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. Yeah, very beautiful. I'd love, I'd love to see more of it, yeah. All right, great one words, T. Great one words. All right, folks, that's all we got. Thanks for all you people on the YouTube chat that tune in, all the live viewers. We, uh, we really appreciate it. And all you people that listen are going to listen to this after the fact. Thanks for tuning in. We got our last thing on the YouTube was Andre Lacroix. How do you say his last name? Lacroix? Lacroix. Lacroix. Andre, if it were, what, however we pronounce your last name, he says, fans want to know where you guys think the World Cup will be next year, basic or something new. We kind of touched on it. We think by the sounds of it, they're going to be at new places next year. Yeah, I heard Stuttgart and... Um, Bogota, Turkey. maybe. Bogota. Oh, yeah, Bogota, and I heard Turkey, too. So, who knows? New places. Uh, right on. So, yeah, thanks to everyone in the chat. That was a great show. Thanks to ProGate Europe. Winning starts the great gate. Um, James won national championships last year with a great start on a pro gate Europe. How about that one? I just slid that one right in there. That was really just from the rafters as well, but in the best way. Thanks to, you know, you're a good guy. Yeah. Thanks pal. You no, know, you fucking lit those other Canadians up on a pro gate Europe. Oh, you're good, baby. That was a great pro gate Europe. Super fast, baby. That's just what we like to see. What we, want, we, like. we want to see an absolute rocket. Uh, you know what? That's all we ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Let me snap on red, baby. Uh, you know, thanks to motorsheets.com guys, get your track. It's next, you know, races are happening next year. Go to motorsheets.com, get a timing and storing system made easy. Brought to you by coffee <laughs> Remember kids, uh, snap on green. We'll see you next week with Felicia Stancil. Looking forward to it. All right. Snap on green folks. See you peeps. <laughs>